down here in the bottom right hand corner of Antigua Shipyard, we have our Red Protoss player from Dream Team Gaming, formerly of the Shield Clan. It's Scar. Shield Clan, of course, uh, being used to give a lot of players their uh, their start in Korea. It was a place, uh, I believe Doa said that this was the, uh, you know, there were a couple of teams that were set up that were launching pads for uh, a lot of Korean stars and things like that. And Scar was one of the great students there. We'll see if he's going to rise to great success one day. His opponent here in the top left-hand corner, though, is our Teal Terran player from Acer, none other than MMA. He definitely has an opportunity to make a showing here against MMA. MMA, a very, very top-tier player. As you, you know, as we were discussing, a little bit of a slump lately, but he's got to be coming out of it near uh, in the near future. And his display in that last set was just immaculate. Was EMPs. I was saying, was there a unit they missed? If it was, it was like a probe and an observer or something, because yeah, he had everything. The whole yeah. army had no shield. It was awesome. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I think I think there was only one time in that game where MMA truly missed an EMP, and I think he was hunting for an observer or thought there was an observer overhead and tried to reveal it with EMP but missed. But that was it. He was perfect otherwise. Yeah. MMA is one of those players who always seems to have a sixth sense for observers floating overhead. There's just a few of those guys. Uh, the ones that come to mind for me are Bomber, Pult, uh, MVP, and Jock G. The, yeah. Those are just the four guys that Jock G. You, oh my you just, goodness. just don't even make observers against them because they're all yeah. going to die. I, I, oh, I was watching a game with Jock G the other day. <laughs> just, it was, he knows this. Uh, you know, these guys, you can also be very aware of, of the timings of when observers will arrive in your base with common openings. And so there's specific times you just, hey, you just go and look in the bottom left of your base or, you know, and um, hey, oh, look, there's an observer. It's, it's pretty crazy stuff, man. I really have a, a large respect for that. You know, I, I always say it. One of the things that I respect most out of any player is an obvious effort uh, to study certain things, whether yeah. it's, you know, timing attacks or whether it's observer timings, all these little, um, those players that will arrive just the second you're about to drop your 15 hatchery down and suddenly a drone arrives at the exact second at which no longer can you do that. Yeah, it's very cool stuff. I mean, and certain players have... Uh you know, they've played the game more on feels and things like that, and some of them have been very successful. Then you have the other side, the very mechanical, the very orderly players. Um, and I'm not sure, you know, what you would classify MMA as because he has very, uh, obviously immaculate timings and everything down, but he's also been a player who's very adaptive. I specifically yeah. remember the GSL finals against MVP. Everyone was like, wow, oh, MVP is going to win no contest. It's going to be 4-0, and it's just this is going to be the most boring finals ever. Well, it ended up being one-sided, but in MMA's favor. It was a 4-1. I believe, um, and every game, or well, almost every game, he was sitting there and just doing things that completely countered MVP, whether it was Proxy, Marauder, Hellion, um, just crazy things that he was doing. And that's one of the things about MMA. He can really pull out such a crazy number of strategies. He's very, very effective with using different small groups of units. I mean, we've seen him I remember seeing uh, when MMA was kind of getting his rise to fame uh, set against Nestea on Metropolis where he just dismantled him with drop play. And it was really, really surprising because a lot of people, I mean, it was MMA, this guy that, you know, as you said, he had done some success in team leagues, but uh, wasn't wasn't as well known at that time. And suddenly everybody's like, what is going on right now? Then this, of course, was when Nestia was basically ruling the universe. So, Of course. Uh, now he's facing off here against Scar on Antigua Shipyard, which, as we said, an interesting choice here from Scar. What are your thoughts on it? Well, um, yeah, I mean, because uh, MMA has already decided to do something weird. He's going to go for a, um, a, um, a Marine Hellion drop. Uh, he ended up opening with that quick gas, uh, built his factory right afterwards. So staying on one base for a while. Scar actually doing kind of a similar thing, staying on one base for an extended period of time. He's got a lot of minerals, a lot of gas, decides to build the uh, Twilight Council off to the side along with the robotics facility. Yeah, and building them in separate locations Big indicator he does not want to allow these to both be seen with a single scan. Could mean that we're going to see some sort of blink observer play here out of SCAR. Yeah, very possible. Uh, this map is conducive to that style of play. Looks like MMA planning on a command center. There it is. It saved up a lot of resources, started to build add-ons. So he's going to open up with this attack, try and do some damage, put on yeah. some pressure, and see what he can get from that. Now, even if his attack doesn't really do all that much damage, at the very least, it should get a well, decent scout so long as he doesn't drop right here. SCAR has one gateway, though. Uh, like one, one, one gateway at all. And uh, this quantity of Marines with Hellions will kill those Stalkers and then kill Scar. Uh, so, oh, yeah, okay, he does have two more Stalkers. I was going to say, this is like a super, super greedy build. I was wondering if he was expecting MMA to go for like a double command center or something of that nature and was gambling it a lot. But actually, he's been nonstop producing Stalkers this whole time. Yeah. It should be relatively safe here. 
He'll be safe, but I still think this is going to hurt him because he invested a ton into tech, and it looks like he's going for a three-gate uh, Blink Stalker out of this. Uh, try to get up in there, poke in, take out some add-ons and things like that. But MMA knows that this is uh, knows that this is Antigua Shipyards. So look at where his buildings are positioned. It's not like some Terran players where you can easily take advantage. That's blink such into, a great point. Yeah, blink yeah. into the main, pick off an add-on or two, position yourself behind buildings, save all those stalkers, and then get back out. And like, MMA even picks up on the pylon. Yeah, this is just really really, really clean out of MMA um, because Scar, ideally, let's let's talk about best case scenario. Scar would love to blink up, be able to target down that stim that's being researched here mm -hmm. and then get out of dodge and enough done. Enough done. If you reset stim when it's three quarters of the way done, I mean, you basically just killed a cybernetics core and stopped warp gate. It's not really that much different. And here in this situation, I don't think Scar's going to be able to get that done. All right, you're so, right about the building deplacement, man. That's such a good thing to point out. Yeah, I mean, and MMA's the kind of guy who uh, really pays attention to stuff like that. Oh, four probes have already been torched. Seven oh, probes have wow. gone down. Eight probes. Well done there. Uh, Fourteen workers in total have been killed so far, so maybe even MMA getting a couple more than I'd anticipated. And he showed the blink. Yes. He showed the blink. MMA saw the robo. He knows exactly what's going on. He's got a bunker, three quarters, it is done. It's completed. He's got a second one being constructed as well, and nothing is going to uh, happen here for Scar. Okay. Well, yeah, MMA just getting his forces to the side. May actually end up losing a supply depot, and it uh, looks like that's down to just 15 hit points. So it's probably going to go down, but there's a lot of excess supply for MMA, so he actually mm -hmm. doesn't really care about that. Yeah, now he's got a medevac even on the field. Stim is completed. Things looking really, really good for Acer's MMA at this point. Scar is going to be in a tough spot. He's going uh, for into the expansion. It's about halfway done at this time. But he's not able to tech up behind this uh, any further. You know, he's really got to make sure that he gets units on the field, some sentries. It looks like he's going to opt for some immortals after seeing the marauder count as well, because he definitely needs a more varied composition than just Blink Stalker. Oh, yeah. And MMA, of course, is going to position all of his buildings, because once this uh, starport ends up finishing up with this uh, uh, medevac, he's probably going to lift that up, get it out of there, move it off to the side. Still has a lot of units, though. Stim is actually finished up, and he immediately repairs up the starport. He gets so many SEVs there. Yeah, definitely doesn't want to lose that. That would be a victory for Scar, of course. Uh, and he made sure that Scar lost a couple of stalkers there by baiting him, being like, no, I'm not going to repair this star, but look, you're so close to killing it. Almost like a Cats versus Scarlet kind of thing where your hatchery is so low, I want to kill it. And Scar took some excessive, uh, or extra damage, we should say, more than he really needed to. Okay, well, Scar's around the side now. He's got two observers inside of MMA's base, so we could bounce back in and try and do some damage. Looks like this Nexus has finished up down in the bottom right. Scar, at the very mm. least, what he has done very well, even though he hasn't really killed anything from MMA, and MMA was able to see this from a mile away, he's prevented MMA from dropping down his second command center. Yeah. And all that being said, he's caught up almost in economy. MMA has not been able to put this down. He's oversaturated on his main, so he's uh, starting to mine out of that very quickly. Uh, and that's allowed Scar to start to really catch up. Yeah, Scar is doing a pretty good job of that, and he's working on his tech, getting charged right now, continuing to pump out those immortals. We haven't seen any high-level tech, though. A no Templar archives, which is what I'm, I, I would expect here with the charge research. Uh, and he still has a ton of stalkers, though. And he'll be able to effectively harass MMA and keep him at home uh, for a little bit longer here. But eventually, MMA is going to have enough units. He'll be able to move out on the map, force the Stalkers away while having enough at home to prevent the blink in. And once the Stalkers are actually, I mean, that may happen just now. We'll see. All right, it looks like he's going to engage this straight up. There are two medevacs overhead, so uh, these Marauders are going to trade pretty cost-effectively. Even though there's enough Stalkers there to literally kill the Marauders, they just kill, what, like four or five uh, um Stalkers right away. The rest yep. of the units are starting to catch up now for MMA, who actually full stims them out of his base. And here's the thing. Even if he had traded at a cost deficit, MMA just removed the harassment potential of Scar. So now MMA can actually move out of the map, whereas before he couldn't because he was afraid of Stalkers blinking into his main. Now there's not enough Stalkers to really worry about that. MMA is going to be able to move out while Scar is still sitting with no splash damage here in just a minute. Okay. Well, two more barracks coming up. MMA eventually going to be on five. Pretty standard number at this stage of the game. Reactor dropping down on a starport, too. On his opponent's side of things, though, looks like a total of five gates and a uh, robotics facility continually churning out uh, immortals just over and over and over again. I think he's got uh, three with a fourth on the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Expecting MMA to overproduce those uh, Marauders by just a small margin, but it really hasn't. Uh, six, seven Marauders? Oh, there are eight. Okay, but 14 Marines to accompany that. Uh, a lot of medevacs as well. This is pretty dangerous for Scar. He does not. He's got three sentries with very, very limited amounts of energy here. And MMA stims up, tries to get around the side. Oh, and he can actually oh, hit the Twilight Council so nice. from the low ground. Very cool because that's going to reset his opponent's tech, essentially. Yeah, and Scar can't even come forward to pick off a medevac MMA, slowly dismantling Scar here, and we'll see if Scar's going to be able to find a way out. You know, he... Oh, no, Kevin, he didn't get the Templar Archives down before he lost the Twilight Council, and so now the only direction he can really go, and he's just going to redrop the Twilight Council. <sighs> That's a tough call. You know, from here, you, you want to just go into Colossus, but you know your opponent has already got four medevacs. So they can just start making Vikings the second they need to. Yeah, absolutely right. So um, MMA not going to push this right now. Just going to take his own third base, sit back, contain his opponent for a while, do the same thing that he actually did in the last game to Sickness, drop down his factory here so he actually prevents a Nexus uh, from being set down for a long time. It's, it's not imperative for him to move into uh, double uh, starport production right now. So if that factory would land for a while, get under attack, he could try and flit it away, but if it doesn't, it's not that big of a loss. I really, really like MMA. He floated his factory. Actually, it's still... Okay, no, he did leave it there. So he floated his factory away. He left the Marine. And he's like, I'm going to kill the first probe. Oh, nope. And Scar's all over it. He comes up with the units first. So you can see MMA's still on the ball right now, stimming that Marine away for just a second. Picks off the Observer. I'm waiting for the probe to come up. Then he kills it. And then he comes in with the factory, like after the army comes in and kills the Marine. Like you can see actually the forethought in MMA, because why not just leave that factory there? Well, mm -hmm. you may just kill it uselessly and it'll do nothing for me. Let me see if I can use it a little more tactically. And MMA pulling a lot of SUVs now to his newly completed third base. So he's got very nice mineral saturation this entire time. He picked off one observer, doesn't see the second one for the time being. Of course, he either wants his opponent to move his units out of position so we can drop here into the main and start an engagement there. Um, but now I love that he's going up to his Ghost Academy. He's got ghosts now on the way. Uh, he's read. got great, yeah, he's got great vision of his opponent. He knows that there's no Colossi on the field. He had seen a ton of Immortals being made over and over again. All he has to to do is chunk out a couple of shields and he's fine to attack. Absolutely. And it looks like Scar is going to be going for the high, uh, the Templar archives. Fake so drop. he's going to have high Templar, things like that. This could be cute. But, you know, unfortunately for him, Scar actually doesn't have an observer or any sort of scouting over there. Yeah, so, so it's actually going to get pretty close, and then, uh-oh, oh, Scar did waste did blink. Uh, yeah, Scar did waste a blink, but MMA's not going to push it. He's not going to roll through the front. Yeah, there's not really too much of a reason to right now. He's in a great position with the third base, his opponent with none. He's got 2-2 two -two finishing up. Scar's just now began this very second. I mean, he's ahead in every regard, so he doesn't really need to push things. If an opportunity does present itself, you know, dive in head first, but... sure. Uh, just like we saw last game. I think he has a couple of ghosts already catching up to the front now. Three of them actually in this medevac. So he's hiding them uh, when this initial attack happens so that he can then drop so them down smart. around the side. And oh. EMP, and he forces the engagement out of Scar. EMPs most of the stuff. A couple of sentries still had energy on them, so they were able to get down a couple of force fields. Zelts are attacking from the top right now. MMA actually trying to run down from around the side uh, and has to retreat for the time being. Now, of course, investing in that third base did leave him a little weak on army for a little while. Uh, his production is better to try and make his way out of this. Look at that micro. Uh, these units, are, uh, unfortunately, are going to die <laughs> in the end, but he actually saved the Marauders, which had certain death, picked them up into the medevac, and dropped them back down yep. afterwards. Cool MMA stuff. MMA is playing so crisp right now, but Scar did a fantastic job of breaking that with no tech uh, whatsoever. I mean, he had no splash behind that. The EMPs were beautiful. It just didn't matter. Scar, at this point, is going to force the lift on the third. MMA coming down from the back. We'll see if he can manage to take this. EMPing the Immortals. They fall incredibly fast. Just the Archon remaining for splash damage. It goes down with it. The charge lots now giving pursuit. Kiting beautifully is MMA. Down to just his last few units. Another EMP going to blow the shields on those Immortals and suddenly Scar is out of units. All right. So, and that is I, I don't want to call GG right now but that's exactly what MMA needed to do to really lock up this game in his favor. He held on to a big attack at the moment when his opponent was going to have a bigger army or at least a comparable army even with the mm -hmm. setbacks before because MMA invested into tech into upgrades and into his economy back in the form of a third command center. So if he holds on to that command center, you can see how delayed this one is. If he holds on to that command center, uh, then he's totally fine in this game. And he's actually miles and miles yep. and miles ahead. Absolutely. Uh, you know, he's got 3-3 three, three on the way. 2-2 two, two did just finish for Scar, however, so we are on equal upgrades. And I got to say, Scar has done a beautiful job of keeping himself in this set because yeah. he looked, uh, after, you know, that uh, that first Blink Stalker failure, I mean, that was like 
terrible for him. Horrible. And he's now, he put himself in a reasonable position before. Now he's definitely far behind that attack. Needed to do more damage than it did. Uh, you know, because he, he delayed his tech for so long. But, yeah. you know, here we go. MMA is now coming up, guys. He's got a huge army advantage. We'll see what he can do with it. Well, he's only got one ghost, and he's still five energy away from an EMP. So uh, it's going to be a little while before he can actually effectively zone nice. out those Templar. Oh, but he runs up with one. Get it. Gets it. No. Oh. He actually forces out the storm, so it loses all the energy. <laughs> but still, that Templar sitting alive with four It's half an Archon, man. That is yeah. half an Archon. That's one of the few half things that Protoss will actually permit. And now this ghost finally does have uh, an EMP, but Scar, you can see, not making... Well, okay, I was about to say not making the same mistake as Sickness did and clumping all of his Templar, because uh, he's got a couple positioned up at the top. They're spread out a little bit, but there is a pretty decent-sized yeah. group, and if an EMP hits that, it would be devastating for it Scar. It definitely would. Storm going to just clip a couple of Zealots here. That's a bit of a sacrifice for Scar, who's currently down to just 110 supply to 144 for MMA. He's got 3-3 three, three nearing completion here, and I think if we just see MMA just... Continue to poke here, light damage, you know, pick off a couple of zealots, but not really commit to anything until he has 3-3. He may be able to just steamroll over Scar once those upgrades are done. There's a lot of high Templars still remaining. They may not oh. have, all have full energy, but they get some very nice storms. You see how many bio units died, and the rest of those are oh, very, wow. very injured. Now, through all of this, oh, never mind. Look at that. There's actually a drop going on at the same time, a double drop. Did that clean up any more workers? Not really, not much, yeah. but uh, it looks already. like it depowered one warp gate and uh, certainly killed a lot of units, and it's still killing pylons. Question is, is it going to bring the units home from Scar? This is Scar's opportunity. I mean, he just did so much damage to MMA's forces. MMA doesn't have 3-3 quite yet, but he's only seconds away from completing it. No warpins available for Scar. He can't make units at home to deal with this pressure. The Marines continuing to deal things. Finally, some zealots do arrive, but the pylon gets taken out, and that's going to severely limit Scar's ability to reinforce here. 3-3 just finished for MMA. Scar has to go home. Yeah, six pylons actually died there. And MMA is uh, is going to be forced to live these once again, finally does. But killing the pylons is very nice, forces a lot more resources out of his opponent. But then we have a war prism drop inside of the main of uh, MMA too. So Scar's trying to strike back with a little bit of aggression of his own. He is, and uh, you know, this harass is very, very nice right now. Uh, it's the kind of thing, I mean, he does need to keep MMA at home at this stage because MMA has such a big upgrade advantage right now with 3-3 versus 2-2. Two, two, and the medevacs have been able to heal up that army. I like that Scar's doing what he can to keep MMA on his side of the board. MMA now going to put up a fourth base. It's been a little while in coming because he actually went to his third base so much faster Ooh. than his opponent did. He's actually going to be mined out of this game quicker if both players stabilize on three bases and just keep trading and killing the fourth in the middle of the map. And in fact, this is actually just going to be the orbital command he lifts over yeah. to, the, uh, to the fourth instead. It's going to be very, very nice for MMA. That's going to give him some serious map control as long as he's able to stabilize on it. And Storm goes down on the most zealots. interesting of positions. <laughs> yes. Hit mostly Zealots there, so not, not the best Storm. And uh, it's still a fair number of Ghosts. Look at wow. actually how many Ghosts there are, and they're just going to lead the charge. 11. They just need to hit a couple of EMPs. They do uh, chunk out a, the Ugh. shields of a lot of units there. And he snipes the one off to the side before it's able to get up and get a storm off. That's GG. Scar goes down. MMA takes a second game in a row for Acer. Beautifully played out of MMA. Scar not able to reciprocate the success he had against Mufasa. MMA really stepping it up. That's two victories now he's secured for Acer. So uh, really, I mean... Bringing it back from an 0-1 start, of course, because Dream Team Gaming did lead the uh, the game the match to start. Yeah, so now uh, Acer does have the advantage, and it looks like up next for Dream Team Gaming, we are going to have Master E. For League of Legends fans, no, that's not Master E. We're not going to see Alpha Strikes or Stupid Healing Ultimate afterwards. Um, this is just going to be... Sorry, I hate Master E. I, I hate AP Master E for troll, man. AP E. I just want to murder everyone who plays him. Uh, anyway, guys, we're going to run to a commercial break, and when we get back, it's time for game number four between MMA and Master E. Thank you. 